What's going on, everybody? It's BBK Dragoon coming at you today with great news for Destiny 2, which is a huge change of pace because, wow, it has been nothing but downhill the last three weeks. Things looking horrible and horrible, but finally we got information about seasons. So at TwitchCon, you had some bungee folks there. I know Cosmo and Deej. I was at dinner. This was at like 5.30 p.m. my time. 7.30 p.m. on a Friday, so I don't think a ton of people actually caught this unless you were, you know, watching the Twitch stream. Uh, I don't think it's actually had a VOD come out just yet. Anyway, the deal is Seasons in Destiny 2. I didn't expect anything from this live stream. Honestly, I expected more disappointing news, but there's a handful of things here that bode extremely well for the future of Destiny, and the very first one and uh, by the way, I'm reading from the nice recap post put together by Doc Red on Reddit. So thanks for putting this together. Main thing here, the torch has been passed on from the team who made Destiny 2 to the team that is maintaining it, also known as the live team. And this is a huge deal for a number of reasons, which we'll cover in just a second. The live team, their main goals, they want to give reasons for players to continue engaging with the game on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. New pursuits, rituals, and challenges and lots of things that they're basically adding towards the game. We're getting the first expansion, Winter 2017, so in December, The Curse of Osiris, and then Destiny 2 will have four seasons a year, and we're gonna be getting these new seasonal updates every three months. That indicates to us that season one may go a little bit longer because of the PC release this upcoming Tuesday, or is the 24th Tuesday, I think, yeah. And so season one is probably concluding sometime late November, early December, and that'll happen right before probably the launch or maybe alongside the launch of Curse of Osiris. Now, the big deal here that you need to focus on, the main team that built Destiny 2, right? They're on to bigger and better projects. They're on to Destiny 3 or whatever, and it's now all in the live team's lap. This is a huge deal because the live team, I think, really figured out near the end of Destiny 1 how to put in engaging activities. I use Age of Triumph as a good example. Not all of the live team events were that great, but I will say this, the live team is way more in touch with creating an engaging play space for us than the folks over at the main team who basically built this one-off great 20 to 25 hour experience and then said, no, nah, we're done, we're moving on to the next thing, it's your job now. So I have huge faith in the live team and this is supremely good news because the live team, I don't think is under the gun or the thumb pressure of the higher ups, the CEOs, the Jason Joneses, or whoever in management basically said, make Destiny 2 way more casual, please, to make sure we get better reviews on the story. <laughs> so why don't we just dip into the seasons here? Seasons have themes associated with them. They take feedback from the community uh, for adding, adjusting things such as new emotes and rewards. The season goals, more predictable timetable. So now for the very first time, we actually have a freaking roadmap for Destiny 2. Every three months, we're getting a brand new season, okay? You get to know when the sandbox tuning are going to go live, basically your, your PVP weapon balance patches and things that they're going to change for PVE on the large scale, new features, more content. These are the big patches that change the meta. So we now are basically getting a much more predictable roadmap and we've asked for a roadmap as a community for so stinking long and it's just exciting to see this. So season two is starting winter 2017, December most likely and the dawning is going to be the theme for that season. Now what's really cool is the seasons themselves, the, they have effects that go throughout the world. It's not just the social space anymore. You don't just see dra drapings in the tower or the farm. We're gonna see environmental effects hitting everywhere. You can start to see sort of the snow falling here, at least in the tower. Looks like we have a hockey puck to play with instead of the soccer ball in the tower hangar. It does look like Festival of the Lost isn't happening unless it's gonna be considered a much smaller one-off event. We have um, another Iron Banner of season one and one more faction rally, and they learned about Iron Banner, which is super, super exciting. With these seasons comes a whole new slew of armor, shaders, weapons, faction gear to collect, which is supremely exciting and good news to hear. So for Iron Banner, 1500 years worth of time played between all guardians. Um, they learned about the economy. They didn't, you know, they heard our feedback. We didn't enjoy just tokens only. So for season two, there will be ornament slots that require an objective for you to unlock performance-based objectives uh, that once you've completed it, you know, winning 10 Iron Banner matches, flawless in trials, that kind of a thing. So they are bringing back performance-based ornaments, which is a, a big deal. That's a critique that I levied at the, the game to begin with. 
Uh, for the token changes, you're going to be able to buy some loot with legendary shards and tokens. So they're returning it more to the way Iron Banner was in Destiny 1, which is a good thing because I don't know if you guys looked at the loot tables or some of the practical examples of what people were doing with Iron Banner. But to get the full set, some folks had to play, theoretically, about 100 matches or so, which seems a little odd, right? Maybe just a little much. For Trials of the Nine, there's going to be ornaments, but they're not going to show them off just yet. Updated weapons, both the visual looks and the perks, so we are going to be getting some new perks, right? Let's say the energy hand cannon was really good, but now we're going to swap it to the kinetic slot, that kind of a thing. Uh, we have one more faction rally coming for Destiny 1, <clears throat> Destiny 2 Season 1. Uh, for Season 2, there will be changes to promote playing with the fire team more than just solo. Meaning, I'm going to go solo farm because that's more effective, won't always be the thing. This does not mean a nerf to solos, but rather a buff to a fire team. So you're encouraged to play with your friends and hopefully crew up with a buddy or two that has, um, you know, your same faction in mind. We have the new armor sets, which are looking crispy. Dead Orbit looks very nice, very emo. New Monarchy is getting pretty shiny. That looks decent right there. And then Future War Cult. Future War Cult is looking mighty crispy. I don't know, for this next one though, I think Dead Orbit probably has my my take on it. Just those tattered up cloaks look pretty sweet. And then uh, the new Monarchy weapon looks rad. Future War Cult, or down here at the bottom, and then uh, Dead Orbit, so. We have a new event that's coming into play called the Clarion Call. It's before the end of season one, you get double XP, which is what fills up your bright engram uh, thing at the bottom. While playing activities with your fire team, clan collaboration is required. This is brilliant. Do more of this by G, do more of this. I love it. Bright Engram changes. All the emotes and other rewards from uh, the bright engrams will be updated and changed at the season changes, okay? Uh, there's a new mic drop emote that's coming into play. Book looks pretty sweet. Certain rewards from Bright Engrams will be retired, making them limited and exclusive and not available to, available to collect anymore. But if you already have it, then you can keep it. I don't believe that unless, uh, maybe, I don't know. In Destiny 1, they, they said that, but things kept dropping. So, <laughs> so we have some new ships coming in and they look just phenomenal, dude. I am so happy. See, more gear to collect, more gear to go after is a really good incentive to keep people playing. I mean, some of these sparrows and gear just look phenomenal. It brings me back to the hype that I had right before Destiny 2 launched. And the ghosts, oh my gosh, like look at that ghost. That's amazing, dude. Some of these new ghosts just look totally different than what we're used to seeing and I love it. In regards to shaders, shaders stay season over season. They heard our feedback over deleting shaders in mass. It's on their to-do list, but no promises. One of the complaints here is they're adding more shaders and there's not enough slots for the amount of shaders that there are, which doesn't make sense. Give us more slots for shaders, please. Memory constraints aside, Bungo, make it happen. Uh, armor changes, changes in bright engrams when the season changes, new armor with new seasons. And then for crucible maps like Eternity, Emperor's Respite, and the uh, Shores of Time, the Distant Shore remake, they're gonna be adding more maps when they make sense for the particular event. So I would expect a few new Crucible maps during the dawning season. Sandbox tuning. The um, Basically, they're gonna be doing a meta swap. So you're gonna probably see auto rifles get nerfed. You're gonna see Mida get nerfed. This is just my speculation. But if it, it, it looks like they're going to be switching things up big time when it comes to the next season. And uh, that's good. I think that's good. I think weapon variety is good. And I know some people hate the fact that, hey, there was the era of the auto rifle and they're probably going to make a new era. This next era might be the hand cannon era or something. So we'll, we'll just see what it's going to end up being. But sandbox tuning updates four times a year is such good news. Uh, the clan leveling is going to be completely changed at this point. So clans have a max level so that smaller clans have a chance versus only larger, more active clans. Uh, keeps everything on a more fair level. The clan rank will reset at season two and we'll get those new perks to earn as well as new rewards. Um, like the, you can actually now color the little flag post for your clan banner, which is kind of cool. And then uh, clan engram updates, they're gonna make sure that the loot pools are updating alongside of that. Bungie's gonna be at the Paris game week and I don't actually have a VOD link for this just yet. All right, what does this all mean? All of this is happening in the background now because of the live team. Not only do we have the DLC, the first expansion going live in December and then another one followed in the spring, but we have these new seasons that are gonna bring new gear, hopefully some new smaller events like the faction rallies and actual ongoing conversations with us, the community saying, hey, well, we realized First Iron Banner was not exactly what it needed to be. 
we're listening because we're the live team and we're going to communicate with you. That is so refreshing and that's what we need to hear as a player set. Had you had released this information, let's say two, three weeks ago, Bungie, right when the end game controversy was hyping up, we would have been a little bit more quiet. It's when Bungie doesn't talk to us about what's next or what's in the future because you haven't given us a great track record of trust during Destiny 1 for all three years. You remained silent and only talked when it was just a few weeks or a few months too late about what's next and what's coming down the pipeline. This is the kind of information we need to hear. I trust the live team. I really think they are going to salvage Destiny 2 and make it something over time that becomes far, far better and keeps players engaged. This is loot that I want to go after. And as long as you're talking with us in this manner, in a respectful way, saying, hey, we understand there's some shortcomings here, but we're going to work to try and fix it. That is so much better than the off-putting cold shoulder that we basically had the last five weeks of, oh, you don't like it? Nah, just go make some friends, bro. That's fine. Yeah, it'll get better eventually. We'll tell you, you know. I love that it's now handed over to the live team. I will just speculate here and say that Bungie is insanely delegated. They've got everything so compartmentalized there that it's like, all right, here's the pizza box, right? The, the team that actually built Destiny 2 made the dough and put the tomato sauce on the pizza and then plopped it in the lap of the live team and go, here we go. We're done. We're working on Destiny 3 now. We'll see you in three years, boys. And the live team now has to be like, okay, um, we need to add cheese to this pizza. And some players like pepperoni, uh, some really like green peppers. Maybe we need to put some sausage on this pizza. And then Greg's like, well, I like black olives. And they're like, no, shut up, Greg. Black olives are disgusting and don't belong on pizza. Do you get what I'm saying? It is sort of weird that they're like, okay, we're done with it now. Plopped in your lap. You're in charge of De Destiny 2 for the rest of its lifespan. I get it, maybe that's what they have to do in a studio of 700 people, but I trust the live team way more than I do this, <laughs> the A team that's building just the one-off Destiny 2 big release. Three updates, or excuse me, four updates a year, knowing when we're having those every three months. Gosh, that is so good to hear. So overall, first really strong bit of positive news for Destiny 2. I'm excited and assured. So let me know what you guys think about it down in the comments section below. I'd love to hear some detailed thoughts and feedback regarding seasons and what you're hoping to see in the dawning. Thanks very much for watching. If you enjoyed, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe for more, and I'll see you very soon.